of this world. The kingdom of this world is controlled by the devil. He decides what he wants. Now, both kingdom operate on different principles. The kingdom of God has its own principle. The kingdom of this world has its own principle. And you either belong to one kingdom or the other. Is that you are part of the kingdom of God fully or you are on the other side? There is no middle ground. Tell you about there is no middle ground. I can't even say there is no middle ground. You know, so this world is also governed by two financial systems. This world is also governed by what? Two financial systems. The kingdom financial system and the Babylonian financial system. Babylonian financial system is the money system that we see that controls this world. And it's also you either, op- you either know how to operate one of the systems, one of the financial systems. There is no middle ground. They are different. The problem with the church is that before we become born again, many of us have been trained on how to operate the world financial system, the Babylonian system. But when we get saved, we become members of the kingdom of God. And the, in the kingdom of God, I tell you, many of us in this church already knows that the system, the currency for the kingdom of God is not, is not money. The currency in the world system is what? Is money. The more money you have, the more you can do. More, Satan uses money to control the world. That is why they say the love of money is what? Is the root of all evil. Money is not evil, but the love of what? Of it. People kill, steal, and they destroy because of money. But Jesus, but in the kingdom of God, the currency is not money, it's what? It's faith. And that makes a lot of difference. The kingdom system, and the kingdom financial system, the, the currency to get things done in the kingdom is faith. The currency to get things done in the world financial system is money. In the world system, the more you have, the more you can buy. But in the kingdom of God, the more faith you have, the more you can achieve. Now listen to me, very important. God does not need money to operate. Hello? God does not need what? Money to operate. All he's looking for is what? His courage is faith. Unfortunately, most Christians are running after money instead of running after more faith. Most of a lot of Christians don't know how to use their faith to buy without money. Therefore, I mean, therefore we are talking about how to buy without money. In the kingdom of God, it's not much about money. It's about what? About faith. Now, the word system, the problem with the church is that when you become born again, you don't know what belongs to you. you we are already schooled in the Babylonian system. So we pursue our things by the idea of the Babylonian system. We are so schooled. We know that system. We know how to it, which is controlled by money. So we go after it, do everything. People are ready to kill, steal, and destroy because of money. Money controls a lot of people in the world today. But it's not supposed to be so in the kingdom. Because in the kingdom of God, the currency is what? It's faith. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things of what? Of things not what? Not seen. There are two, there are three kinds of power in the world. How many kinds of power? Three. Three kinds of power. And people, people use those power to get things on. The fourth kind of power is the financial power, which is money. Hello? Money power. They says money can do everything. Which is almost true in the world system. Money can do what? Everything. Although it cannot heal cancer. Hello? <laughs> it cannot give you a good home. Hello? So money, there's a lot of things money can do, but it says money can do everything. The next kind of power that is common in the world is the, is the I mean, military power, force. So, if they can't get it done by money, they do get it done by what? By force. So, the world is used to two powers. The first is what? The money, financial power. And then the military power. That's what the world is used to. 
They get their way, I mean, they, they, they get their way done by what? By money, and that's what the politicians use in Nigeria. Money or force. They, I mean, they use both. But there's a third kind of power. Everyone said the third kind of power. There's a third kind of power in this world, which is the miracle working power of God. Hallelujah. Let me say this. That power can do everything that money and military power cannot do. Let me say that the world, they love to see it. They love to see that power when it is happy. Anywhere they see, they are attracted to it. And so, this power can get a lot done faster than any other thing that is going on. Now, what I'm saying is that this money I want to introduce to us. How many of us have need in our lives that we want, you want to buy? We, we don't, and we don't have enough. We have some things you are believing God for. There are some things you want to buy, you don't have money. Raise up your hand, just wave your hand. Because God is going to visit you this morning in Jesus' name. No matter what it is, God is going to visit you this morning in Jesus' name. You see, in the world system, when you don't have, the world solution to when you don't have enough money to buy things, they tell you to do three things. They tell you if you don't have enough money, you know, they say you either borrow, steal, or forget it. If you don't have enough money, they say you should go and what? Borrow or steal. They won't announce it, but they can, or what? Forget it. Unfortunately, <laughs> That is not the only option we have in the kingdom of God. The borrowing system is controlled by, actually, it's also controlled, it's also controlled by Satan if you're not careful. Because it can mess, you can take the best loan with the best security and best business plan and then Satan will mess it up. And many, many Christians have been squeezed by the devil because they borrowed. They went, I mean, they, they didn't know which to borrow, but they learned, they, I mean, they went and they get themselves messed up. And that's why God said in his word, says, you shall not borrow, but lend to nations. Because he knows that if you borrow, Satan can mess you up. How many of you have taken loan, good loans, get one, anything get bad? You, 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 you plan everything well, but it doesn't work out fine. So the world system is, if you don't have money, what do you do? You borrow, you dish. But this money, I want us, our key scripture is in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 and 2. Please put it on board. Isaiah 65 verses 1 or 2. I want to introduce something to us that look, you don't, if you don't have money, the Bible says you can buy without money. I was uh, 55, please, Isaiah 55, 55, 55. Five. He that is thirsty, come to the waters. Oh yes, come you who have what? No money. What did he say? Everybody read. Come, buy and eat. Yes, come. Buy wine and make without what? Without money. Hallelujah. So buying without money is not my idea. It's from the Bible. Hallelujah. He says what? Why? I mean, come buy. Go back to verse 1 again. Let's take a look at it. Verse 1. Everyone who is thirsty, who has something, come to the waters. You who does not have no money. Listen. Buy and eat. Yes. So how do I buy and eat? He says, what does he say? Come. Buy wine and make without what? Without money. And without what? Without price. So say, say to your neighbor, say neighbor, you can buy without money. Because the Bible said so. Hallelujah. Says buy without, says buy wine and make without money and without what? Without price. So, the, so, so God is saying, the, 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 I mean, you can buy without what? Without money. Listen. The will of God is that you should prosper. Hallelujah. The will of God is what? You should prosper. This month we will be focusing on manifesting through wealth. There are different kinds of wealth. Satan gives wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ever forget that. Satan gives wealth. He controls the world by wealth. But God also gives what they call true riches. Everyone say true riches. There is what I call true riches. You see, the true riches, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord, make it rich and have no what? No sorrow to it. When Satan gives you wealth, he will have sorrow to it. With sickness, with disease, with killing somebody, you will lose something. It will be at the expense of your family, expense of your life, of your health, and several things. But when God blesses you, he has no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. And prosperity is more than money. Hallelujah. Prosperity is what? More than money. You see, to a sick man, healing is prosperity. To, to, to an hungry man, food is prosperity. To a tired man, strength is prosperity. Hallelujah. 
Prosperity is, is actually using the power of God to meet every need you have in your life. Hallelujah. Prosperity is using the power of God, the anointing of God to meet every need in every area of your life. Now, you see, there are several things that money cannot buy, but the power of God can get it for you. Hallelujah. So, when the Bible says, come, eat, buy without money. You see, I mean, the, the one solution to money is to borrow. Now, I said there are two systems. Quickly, let's take a look at that. The Babylonian system is based on three lies. Babylonian system is based on how many lies? Three lies. And I want to read them to you. One, it says that you can only, I mean, you can only increase by buying and selling. That you need money to do everything. Number two, it says that your salary or your job is your only source. And then three, you, when you don't, I mean, when, 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 that you should borrow when you do not have. Those are the lies of the Babylonian systems. You know, let me read it again. Lies of the Bible. It says one, that your job is the only source of income. It says your job is the only source of income. It's a lie. Your income is fixed. All you can get is based on all you can work for. That's a lie. You can only increase by buying and selling. That's a, I mean, that's a lie. So when you have a need, you either borrow, beg, steal, or forget it. That's the Babylonian system. But the kingdom system says, number one, why the kingdom provisional system is based on this? God is your source and not your job. Hallelujah. Say, and my God shall supply what? All my needs according to what? His riches in glory. So your job is not your source. Hallelujah. God is your source. Secondly, it says that the kingdom of God, you have access to supernatural provision different from this world. Your income is not fixed. Hallelujah. What he's saying is that you have access to provision from outside this world. Hallelujah. But the Babylonian system tells you that your job is your source. Your only source is your job. You can only increase by buying and selling. So the Babylon, the, in the kingdom system, when you have a need, it is it's not based on buying and selling. It's based on sowing and reaping. Everyone says sowing and reaping. So when you have a need, you sow a seed. That's sowing and reaping. You know what I mean? So the Babylonian system says your job is your source. It says your income is fixed. You can only get all what you can work for. When you have a need, you have to borrow, beg, or steal, or forget it. While the kingdom provisional system is based on God is your source, not your job. You have access to supernatural provision, different from the world. Your income is not fixed. I remember those days when I was, when I was on full-time employment. I was working. One day my wife and I were doing some calculation. I realized that every month I was earning about, that time I was first earning about 33,000. When I started work, right, very years ago. But at the end of each month, we started working. I would have spent over a hundred and something thousand. I didn't steal, I didn't beg, and I didn't cry. Because I had other source, which is different from this world's source. My income is not fixed, it's not limited. Tell you what, my income is not fixed. So my income is not limited to my job. My income is not fixed. Say, so I have access to supernatural provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop looking at your job as your source. Amen. My income is not fixed. I have a sense of supernatural what? Provision. God, I mean, God, I mean, you don't, he, he, there are several things God can do for you. You know, I mean, the Lord said to me that we don't do things in the kingdom because we have money. We do things because, in the kingdom because we have what? We have faith. When we're going to build this church, we didn't start because we have the money. No, we started because we have what? We have faith. Because faith is what? Is the currency of what? Of the kingdom of God. But the problem with the church is that we have limited God's what? To money. Now, three most important things in your life. 
Three most important things in your life is the kingdom of God. You see, when, 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 when you get into a new kingdom, you have to learn how to operate it. The problem is that you are not, you are, we are not, we are using the operation system of the world in the kingdom and it's giving you error, 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 error because it's not, it doesn't work that way. You have to learn how to operate the kingdom. You have to learn how to operate it. When my wife and I we w- moved to Canada some years, several years ago, we didn't know how those things operate. There are things we are entitled to we did not know. There are things we, we should have gotten free that we are struggling with. There are things we are, because we are a citizen, you are in certain things you are entitled to. So we have to learn. We have to read, learn, and know. So the problem is that many people are in church, they are in the kingdom of God, but they have not learned how it operates. They don't understand, especially the financial system of the kingdom. And this money, God is going to open our eyes to see it in Jesus' name. Now, listen. So every, I mean, the worst, is, the worst solution is when you don't have money, you've got to look at those things. You've got to go and borrow. But I read a statement that changed my life, and I'm, going, I'm, I'm getting higher now. The statement said, Ellen White wrote in his book, in one of her books, a, woman, a lady called Ellen G. White, she said, God has more than a thousand ways of providing for us that you don't know of. The first time I read it, I didn't understand it. I began to think. I said, God has more than what? A thousand ways. Look, I said, I said God has more than a thousand ways. Of providing for you that you don't know of most of the time one way is just buying by money God has more than a thousand ways listen to me you can you, you are believing God for something and you want to buy God, God you don't have to buy it for example I want to go to London I, I, I want to go to London then I, my focus is, okay, I need $2,000 to buy a ticket, right? But that's not the only way to get to London. Hello? Who told you I have to buy a ticket? I was, sharing with, I was sharing this with someone. And she said, that's true, pastor. She said, I was believing God for a ticket. She said, I don't have money for a ticket. I said, stop believing God for a ticket. Believe God for what you need. And she said, you know what? One of my friends says, the, 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 the father is going to London and have a private jet. And they took me, so I didn't have to buy it. Because God has what? A thousand ways to provide it for you that you don't want. You don't even know. You've limited God to just one source. You think that bank must be your source. Your boss must be your source. Your, uh, this one must be your No! God can provide things. Elijah was, you see, Elijah was in a place and listen to me, church. He didn't have food, but birds were bringing food for him. Hallelujah. So the three most important things in your life as I go ahead is this. Number one, Holy, ever say Holy Spirit. Ever say Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. The second one, you see the Holy Spirit will speak to you, will give you direction. The second one is your assignment, which is your purpose. Say your purpose. Say your assignment. And then the third one is your seed. For you to understand, to enjoy the financial system of the kingdom, you've got to understand those three things. The Holy Spirit, your assignment, and what? And your seed. The Holy Spirit is the one who directs you. He will give you instructions. He will tell you what to do. Money is always waiting for you in your place of assignment. Hallelujah. Money is always waiting for you. Provision is always in your place of purpose. If you find out your purpose, provision is waiting for you there. In your place of purpose, there's provision. There's money waiting for you at your place of purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem is that you are not in your place of purpose. Hallelujah. And then the third one is your seed. For each one, that's, those three things are important for the kingdom. I will explain it on it later. Now, God said to me, God says, I have more than a thousand ways of providing for you that you don't know of. Several years ago, I was working in the... I, 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 the first time I went to work for the Federal Ministry of Education in Mina. You know, they posted me from Lagos to the north. From the north, they posted me to another place, and I, I, I was having a challenge. When you work for Federal Ministry of Education, they don't, they don't pay you for three months. And those days, I don't know about now, but that's said they, for the first three months, you don't get your salary. They will say you, they now, they now send everything together. So I took money to the, I took some money I have to the place. After the first month, the whole, by one and a half months, the whole money finished. Money to eat, money to go out, this and that. But thank God I was able to buy some food. I was waiting for them to pay. They said they will not pay until my reach the third month. So people said, don't worry, just to fall. So I was alone in my house and I was praying. 
And there was a day I needed to go to the, I was, I was I live in the government quarters. I was there, I needed to go to the town. The town is very far. I'm just, when God began to show me this, I'm trying to share some experience with you. Some, some things that God showed me before I came up with this. So, I, I, I needed to go to town and I didn't have money. So I was saying, God, oh God, by your mercy, send me money. You know, nobody, I don't know anybody in this town. I'm the only one here. I need help. I'm a, your child. I don't have any money now. Send me money. Especially this morning, because I need to, this afternoon, because I need to go to town. Uh, everything is hard. No money. I was praying that. And then, and then I began to write the lesson of faith. I said, I believe I receive in Jesus' name. I believe I receive in Jesus' name. As I was saying that, God said to, Holy Spirit said to me, if you really believe you receive, and so start going to start going and then you see i said I, I i i need money to be able to go god says no if you believe you receive to go to town then start going i said god i don't understand he said to me he said what is the problem is it money you want or you want to go to town i said actually i want to go to town it's very simple god said if you want to go to town believe me you don't need money to go to town. I will take you to town. I've never had it in my life. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He, said, I've never, he says, you don't need money to go. I'll take you to town. I said, ah. So after praying again, God said, go. So I took myself together and I took my bag and I began to go, go by faith, walking. I can't walk to town. It's very far. So I started walking. And I got to the edge of where, uh, to, the, to the field, some white guys were playing lawn tennis. One of them was my colleague. No, two of them were my colleagues. They were playing. And I went to them. I said, hi. They said, hi. Buki, how are you? I said, I'm fine. And I was walking. One of them just dropped. The, the, the Indian guy is actually from Sri Lanka. He just dropped the button and says, and then got into his car. And then brrrr, and drove to me. I said, hey, Buki, where are you? I said, I'm going to town. I said, hop in. Let me take you to town. I said, really? So he got in. I said, uh, he said, where are you going in town? I told him a few places. So I got to touch. I was going to drop me. He said, no, 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 no. Let me take you to every place we are going. I said, ah, what are you doing in touch? I said, no, I'm not doing anything in touch. I just feel, I was just impressed. This person is not a Christian, mind you. He doesn't even believe in God. You know, he's a free thinker because he was my friend. He said, hey, he said, I just had this impression that I should take you to town. So he took me to town, waited for me for about one hour, everything I needed to do, and brought me back home. Now... When he did that to me, I was praying. God said to me, never in your life tie me down to money anymore. Because I don't need money to operate. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? God says, you don't understand. He says, money really, the origin of money. You see, money is not what people used to trade in those days. If you go to school and you did history, they call trade by butter. Everybody said trade by butter. Trade by butter was the fact that somebody needs, uh, I have yam. And then I go to the place. You have shoes. I need shoes. I give you my yam and exchange it for what? For shoes. So they were doing that. Somebody needs clothes. And then the other person needs uh, meat. So I give you my clothes and exchange for meat. But there are days when you need, you need, uh, you, you, you need, you, you need trousers. And this man doesn't need the, the, the uh, cow that you have. So there's a problem. So after some time, they design a stereo. Like, okay. Money, instead of us doing this, doing that, let's get something that we can all use to, for a means of exchange. So money, currency was created for a means of exchange. But the first thing is it was, must be valued and backed by gold. Because the paper is not the thing. The gold is the currency. So that currency you own must be backed by gold. So the money is just a means of exchange. In those days, they didn't have money and they were trading, they were buying things. So God said to me, did you understand? You don't need money. I don't need money to do anything. He said, never you tie me down to money again in your life. Look at him and says, neighbor, don't ever tie God down to money anymore. When I held up, my head went to, I said, oh my goodness. He says, I remember anyway, says, God has more than a thousand ways. So I began to learn this. I began to learn, he says, I, he says tell me what you need. My quest, my, my promise, my God shall supply all what? All your need, not all your money. All your need, not what? All your money. And this works. You may be a millionaire, but there are some things you have need. Don't tie God to money because God can provide the needs. He says, and my God shall supply what? All your need according to what? His riches and glory. 
So I began to learn that. When I resigned, I, I left that job, I resigned my work, and I decided to start a photographic business. Which, which means those days you have all the printing, a printing, if you print papers, you do this and that. So I decided to start one. And I didn't have money. So I was believing God. I saved all the money I have. So I had equipment that I needed to buy. So I listed the equipment. These are the equipment that I needed. And so I was going to bring them in from America. It was going to cost me about ten to $15,000. I didn't have $1,000. But I was believing God for them. And then I began to pray. God, one day somebody said, send me the list. So I sent them the list and then they said, this all this will be at 15000 So I said, God, I need $15,000. Send me 15000 After praying for weeks, for over one or two months on $15,000, $15,000 didn't come. So one day I said, God, why is this money not coming? God said, it's because, is this the money you need or the equipment? I said, Lord, actually it is the equipment. But the money will bring the equipment. God said, you are wrong. You don't need money to get what? To bring in the equipment. So God says, change your prayer. Tell somebody, change your prayers. Say, change your belief system. So God said to me, change your belief system. Change your prayers. So I decided to change my prayers and my belief system. And what happened to me? So I said, God, these are the things I need. Thank you, Father. I receive them by faith. I believe I receive. I, I began to bless the name of the Lord. Lord, I need to pay for my store. I need believe I receive. I began to praise God. Thanking God because I receive. So the list is no longer money. The list is the equipment. Ladies and gentlemen, within a space of two, three months, somebody came and said, Oh, Buki, I heard you are starting a company. What are the things you needed? I said, these are the things. He said, I said, it's expensive. He said, yes. He said, don't worry. I'll see what I can do. The person went to the U.S., bought the whole thing, and brought it back to me free. Hallelujah. God said, I've taught you. Don't tie me down to what? Money. Say, I don't need money to what? To operate. How to buy without money? You can buy without money. Hallelujah. Say, I don't need money to operate. He says, until you understand that, you cannot get the blessing of the kingdom of God. Say, yes, in the world, you need money, but I don't, God says, I don't need money to supply your needs. I said, oh God, thank you. So I got it. And then somebody, and then everything finished, prayed for. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to say to me, he says, when you believe me, the problem is that you wanted, you, 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 he says, just believe me for these things. I'm not asking you to pay for it. Hallelujah. Look at him, I said, neighbor, God is not asking you to pay for it. He's only telling you to believe for it. He said, you are, you are asking me. So I, I told God, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. So we started. And God began to show me these things. I began to understand it little by little, little by little, little by little. I began to work. I began to believe him for things, not for money. I know money can, yes, when I need money. But God says, separate things from where? From money. Somebody said he went to heaven. He had a dream. He said there, 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 was, there was a big warehouse. So that warehouse is full of things for people. Equipment, things up. And then there's, there's a place. There's, there's a, he said, there's a there's other place. He said, in that big warehouse, God said, anything my children need is here. He said, but they, don't, they are not believing me. He said, they are only looking for money. That's not it. He says, I have a package for them. Now, a few months after, uh, a year after when I started this business, listen to me. I started this business. I haven't learned my lesson very well. I was going to renovate my office. And then God began to tell me, oh, you want to renovate your office? Okay. So we started. I saved enough money for renovation. Now, I have a friend who works with the Federal Ministry of Works. This is my friend who was supervising big projects. Every month, Julius Baga and so, they would go to his own, to his own site and they would, they would drop what they call gravel, building materials. They just used to bless him. He was their supervising engineer. So he said, one day he took me to the site and said, Oh, you know, Buki, anytime you have a need for any of this beauty thing, you can come and get it free. I, don't, I just tell them every month, you need, if you are doing any, because come and get from me. I said, fine. So I told him, I said, uh, in about a few months' time, I'll be starting my, in fact, that encouraged me to start the construction of renovating, restructuring the building that I was working in. And he said to me, he said, anytime you have a need, I told him, 
please see me. So I said, okay, I'll be needing gravels and granite. And so, so I said, no problem. So when we started the construction, we bought the wood, the engineers were there, they did renovation, and it's for them, time for them to cast. And so he said to me, <laughs> And so I, I and when it's time for them to cast, they said, when will they get the gravel and the granite to the site? I said, no problem. I said, don't worry, I'll contact my friend a few days. Few days after I contacted him, he said, Ah, I'm sorry. Brother Buki, I'm so sorry. He said, I saw those things a few days ago. Say, I've already committed one on site. So you have to wait for another one month before they, they bring another consignment. And these people are already going to cast the next day. Because human beings will fail. But God will never fail. Those who put their trust in men, men what? Will fail. Ladies and gentlemen, don't put your trust in man. Your men will fail, but God does not fail. Listen, you see, when you trust man and they fail, you get angry with them. You'll be mad. You'll be, as they say, you, 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 you keep malice with them. But when you put your trust in God and they fail, you just say, oh, God didn't want to use them. God just wanted when I when somebody when God taught me that I don't put my trust in man. If you don't bless me, I'll just say, Oh, this is not the man God wants to use now. He's going to use another person. So I won't fight you. I won't be angry with you. But if I put my trust in you, your uncle or your brother or your friend, you put your trust in him and he fails you, you'll be very upset with him. So tell him, say, put your trust in God. Say, stop trusting men. Because men has the ability, the ability to do things is small. We are so limited. But God is unlimited. Hallelujah. So when he failed, I was so, ah, I didn't know what to do. At that time, they were selling a tipper load of granite for about 25,000 naira. That was a lot of money. I was talking about 1990 something. Or is it 80 something or so? It was 25,000. I didn't have it. I was, I was then, then, then a friend of mine walking by said, go to the bank. And so that they will borrow you money. So I tried to go to the bank. They said, no, they, that is a lot of money. They can't borrow me 25000 without a collateral. I must go and bring a house, 25000 those days. Bring a house, bring this one. So I was so upset. So I stayed home. The first day, they said, we are waiting for the granite and the gravel and this. I said, yes, it is coming. They said, when? I said, I don't, it's coming. <laughs> so the first day, I went to office. Construction struck. Second day, I went to office. They said, where is the granite? I said, it's coming. Construction stopped. No money, no granite, nobody to borrow money. So in the morning, I was praying. I said, God, I need 25,000 to buy granite for this thing. God says, is it 25,000 you need or granite? I said, it's granite, it's granite, it's granite. Yes. So as I was praying in the morning, God said, I usually go to the back of my house. At the back of my house, there's a big mountain there. So I decided not to go, instead of going to walk that money, God said, go and pray on the mountain. So I just went to the mountain. I didn't want to go and meet them. They would be harassing me. Say, where is the granite? So I went to the mountain to pray. But as I was praying about this thing on the mountain, the Lord said, that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Everyone say, Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, there's a big mountain. I was on top. He says, and it was bush. He said, go to the other side of the mountain. I said, uh-uh. To do what? This is a bush. Everybody is here in the bush. How can I go to the other side? I don't want to go. Holy Spirit said, go. After prayer, I said, go to the other side. So I went down. I was in the thick bush. And there's another mountain again. Holy Spirit said, climb the other mountain. I said, this thing is taking me to the bush. I hope I'm hearing right. I hope I'm hearing God right. He said, climb. So I climbed the other mountain. He now said to me again, descend to the other side. Take her into the bush. I said, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I hope you are hearing right. I hope there's, a pro there's no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, the Holy Spirit said, just go. So I went. So when I got there, I was in a thick of stark bush. And then, as I was praying, Lucy said, open your eyes. I said, oh yeah, my eyes are open. He says, you are not open. Say, see, look around. Look around. I said, what is it? And I saw stark piles of granite on the floor. Stark piles. The Lord says, you are praying for granite. You are praying for money. It's granite you need. This is granite. It's not, I mean, I said, granite. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was in a dream. I thought I was having a vision. So I said, no, I said, this is granite. You need it. Take as many as you want. So I went there, pulled the granite, used my hand, said, it is real. But I couldn't, I was so afraid. So I, 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 I said, God said, I've answered your prayer. 
You don't need money. You don't need 25,000. What you need is what? It's granite. And that is abundance of granite for you. So I went quickly, called my friend. I said, friend, you know, there's granite so-so. He said, oh, six years ago, that was the dump site of Julius Berger. They don't use it anymore. He said, we used to supervise, but they don't need anything there. You can go and take as much as what? As you want. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout the construction, I took as much as what? As I want. And I didn't have to pay a dime for it. Because you don't tie God down to money. God has a thousand ways of providing for you that what? You don't need of. Look at it. Say, neighbor. Say, stop tying down God to money. Say, your God and my God has more than a thousand ways. He can provide for you that you don't know. Say, neighbor. You can buy without money. Say, faith is the currency of the kingdom. God can supply your need according to his riches and glory. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and what? And forever. So how do you buy without money? Let me just conclude quickly. You know, I mean, one, first of all, you have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see, you have to understand God's purpose for prosperity. You have to seek first the kingdom of God. You have, to, you have to be kingdom minded. Two, make God your source and not your work. Make God your source and not your work. When you have a need, sow a seed, plant a seed. Ladies and gentlemen, in the kingdom of God, it's seed time and what? And harvest. Let me say this. <coughs> Please notice that in the kingdom of God, listen church, when you believe God, God says, I'm not asking you to pay for it. Just believe me for it. I'll never forget this story. True story. True life story. And that will be my last story for the day. My last testimony for the day. A brother, this happened in Kaduna. A brother was believing God for a car. You know, he told God, this is the kind of car I want. I wanted a Jeep. So, you know, you know faith. Faith, so says you got a picture of that jeep you know got a picture of the jeep that you want and then you got to focus because faith has to be specific get a picture put a picture there you know how many of you know that last week god gave us a, a new boss in this church amen god gave us a boss hallelujah now <laughs> two years ago one of our sisters came to me and said pastor buki when, when I was going to do my mother's funeral, I said, we need a boss to go for the funeral. I said, you need a boss. Uh -huh. I said, is it because my mother is getting, we have to go and do my mother's funeral, then we must believe it's not that we need a boss. He said, no, 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 no. I've always envisioned we're having a boss. I said, that's fine. I said, okay, get a picture of the boss you want. Let's believe God for it and God will send it. So she did a picture and sent it to me. And then after that, I traveled, I forgot. Completely for two years. Until I started teaching faith last month. I was teaching faith. The sister challenged me. I said, Pastor Buki, you are teaching faith. What about this project, this boss project? I said, and then she sent the picture back to me. I said, wow. And I said, I said, look, don't worry. God has done it. God has already provided. Since you have a picture of this, this is the picture. This is it. You have it in your mind. He says, ah, but I went to price it two years ago. They said 12 million. When I went to price, now I can't even use my faith anymore. I said, no, the Lord has what? Has provided. And ladies and gentlemen, two weeks exactly after we said that, I don't want to call the story short. I said, I said, don't worry, you are seeing it. Two weeks exactly, the same picture, the same picture, the same picture is out there. The same picture, the same kind of boss came out. What she put there, she came out and it was brought here last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We didn't have the money, but we bought without money. Hallelujah. We didn't have the money, but we bought without money. So this brother had a picture of the kind of car he wanted. He began to believe God. He sold seed for it. So one day he was praying. He said, he said, he was praying and God said to him, if you know you are believing, you know the car. So go to where the car's lot are, car shops and go and price. And go and, go and check the one you really want. You are not sure. This is the type you have. You have to be specific. So he said, he, every time he's passing in front of the car shop, he will look at it and say, ah. then one day he said, look, let me come down. So he came down. He came down and said, let me go and price this stuff. So he got there. He told him, I wanted to buy a, I wanted to buy a Jeep. I wanted to buy a Jeep. Say yes, a four wheel. Say, okay. Say, what color do you want? He looked at it, I looked at it and said, this is the one. You know why you came to price? They don't know whether you have money or you don't have money. 
didn't have any money in his pocket. So he said, this is the one you wanted. So people that are selling cars, they, they, they have a way of testing you. So they told him, he said, get inside, the, they open the car, sit inside. You drive, he said, yes. Can you drive it? Blah, blah, blah. So he, they put on the engine. He was reversing it, trying to move it. As he was saying that, an allergy came. The allergy said, true story, allergy said, ah, wallahi, 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 uh -huh. I, I've come. Oh God, come, 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 come. This is, here is the car I say I won't buy. So here is it. Say, oh, ah, say now this one. Say, ah, this one, where this, where this man is? They say, yes, yes, yes. He said, now that one. Say, my wife said she come here yesterday. She don't see the car. This blood is a red one. That's what she wanted. And, you know, today, now a bad day, I won't surprise them. So the man said, ah. but this man, as well, is one that came first. And he said he wants to buy this. He, has, he said he liked this one, so he has started this. And I just said, oh God, please, say, tell him that he should release this one for me so he can go. So he told the man, he said, he said, he's my first customer. I can't, I, I, he's already starting it. So the allergy said, ah, oh God, release this one for me. Do you want any other color? Say, no, I don't want any other color. Say, tell him to release this one. So the man said, oh God, he said it was just, he said it was just, oh God, I, I bought this, I, 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 I like it. Say, I'm going to pay for it, it's mine, you know, this and that. And they began, and I now sat down and look. I said, and you know, you know, this, I said, this woman self, you know, if you buy them something where they know they like, they will not appreciate it. And then he said, oh God, let's come, let's make a deal. If you can pick another color and leave this one to me, well, I it's a lie. I promise myself, I will pay for that one and pay for this one. Take any one that you want. I said, what did you say? He says, I say, if you leave this one, pick any other one, I will do what? I will pay for both of them. You know what he said? Allergy is because of you. <laughs> if it's not you, I will do it too. <laughs> they are like, okay, Allergy, you can have it. And, uh, say, pick another color. He picked another color. He went home without money. He went home with a Jeep that God gave him without money. Hallelujah. If God can do that for you, for him, he can do also for you. Hallelujah. When you have a need in the kingdom of God, one, make God your source, not your job. In the kingdom of God, the key is what? Sow a seed. In the kingdom of God, it's not about, it's not, it's not about buying and selling. It's what? Sowing and what? And reaping. When you have a need, you do what? You sow a seed. When you sow a seed, God will give you an harvest. God will give you an harvest. God will give you an harvest. And after that, believe that you have what? You have received it. Hallelujah.